I'm back. <laughs> I wish you could talk back to me, but you wonder who's, who's watching. It's, it's odd. Um, a todos in España. Hola. Futebol. Para Brazil. What else can I say? Bonjour, les Français. <laughs> so, okay. Um, as I said, I, I actually like to talk quite a bit. So um, here I go. So data. I've got this question. That's the. This I'll keep for the afternoon, I think. Um, but I can talk a little bit about, about data. Um, it's true. If you do sort of spatial data analysis, you 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 are almost inevitably highly dependent on already existing data, on secondary data, even if you collect your own primary data. And even that is quite rare. Typically, we use you know, existing census or health or other data sources um, all the way. Um, and there's a lot of data out there, and it's hard to find. And you have problems with formats and all of that. And it was really, really very difficult maybe up to 10 years ago. And it's quite easy now, um, relatively speaking. But it, it, you know, it can still be a, a, a minefield. Um, so I'm not quite sure what to say about it, but one, one particular question I got about was this get data function in the roster package. It's a bit of an odd thing. Um, my plan is actually to make a separate package, sort of a data package that would point to all kinds of online resources and would then download it and, and make it available. Um, the reasons for doing it are sort of twofold. One is just easy. It's, it's, um, I find it just easier to, um, you know, do this, and then you know, if I want a different country than France, you have to. So here we say the get them data. So this administrative boundaries, country is France. The ISO three code, three letter ISO code. Uh, there's a function for that to look them up. First level. Um, F R A one is that. Takes a little while to download. Um, I'm not sure if the fifth level is already here. Yeah, there we go. Let's try the fifth level as well. Um, it's just easier than to go to a website, download it, unzip it, put it in a folder. You don't quite remember where. Um, what function do I use again to read it? Uh, so, because now we have plot FRA1. Should have France. Oh, oh, I was also called number five. That's, of course, number five. Um, isn't it lovely? The French Commune.
Clearly, this is not a data set that's very appropriate for my machine and R. It takes a little while to draw. Uh, but eventually, it gets there. Wow. So how many communes are there in France? We'll find out when it stops drawing. I think it's still drawing. Wow. Um, well, I'm uh, not sure. Maybe I can just. I'm not sure what I did. Oh, it's it's finished. So F R A one, which was really f so thirty six thousand communes, um, at least according to this data set. The actual number one. Um, these are um, regions, region. You can add those plots, FRA1. Uh, add is true. Border is red. Line width is two. Let's see if you can see that. There we go. Um, so that's nice. That makes it easy. Uh, of course, if you have data for the French departments that you uh, may want to link to, um, this to plot something. It's all, you always have a lot of trouble uh, with the spelling. You know, you may have Ron Alps, but without the little hat on the O or without without the, the dash. And so it's always a lot of work to make these things fit. But but there's data certainly for display. You can use them. Yes. Um, can you go back to how you got that data? Um, do you have an internet connection? It says I do. It says you do. <laughs> well, if it says it, um, so that's that's so so. Um, oh, okay. So so this is idea. So uh, Sweden get data, get them. Country is Sweden. Level is one. This is what it should do. Um, let me just run up there and see the little comma you've forgotten or the quote you've forgotten or something like that. Let's see. Uh, unexpected input in. That's odd. So I think you copied it here. This is not the right one. Something like that. So did you mm -hmm. copy it from somewhere, from a PDF? Yeah. Yeah, if you copy from a PDF, um, so country is also wrong. So, so one, one issue that if you copy from PDFs, often the quotes are not the simple quotes. You get these fancy quotes, and then R doesn't understand them. So careful with that. Um, you, know, you get a little curly quotes. So this is this is the this is the administrative boundaries data, and then and then in the same get data. Um, you know you can look here. What else you can get? You can get the SRTM elevation data. Um, world claim. Also, the CMAP5 data that I used yesterday is just not documented yet. <laughs> right? So yesterday I I, um, I have that here. I think I did this. A magic number. file magic number. Maybe corrupted. Oh well, that means that your download was incomplete. Okay, maybe the internet was. Yeah, yeah, probably, yeah. Because it tries to unzip it, but it cannot, or something like that, or yeah. And so this is one way, one easy way to get data. Obviously, there's only very few data sources. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, so, um, and, and so this gets us a bit also to climate data downscaling. And so, um, so if you, if you um, yeah, for, for now, I mean, you can sort of guess it. I mean, you have, well, the hard part, well, you have CMIP5, a model name, an RCP, and a year, and a resolution. The resol this is like the world claim. You just have to know what model names you can use and what RCPs, what is for RCPs. But you can, you, if you want to really use this, you, can, you, you would be able to figure out probably if you went to the World Claim website, because the, it's the same acronyms, but you can also certainly download it from there. Um, 
so download data, future conditions. Uh, let's go to the five minutes resolution. Um, and so what I used um, were the, was this one here, which you can hardly see, but HD 26 is the RCP. So well, I'm using 85, so that's the one I had actually, so this one. HD 85 BI 50, so 2050s or 2070s. And so you, you could reconstruct it, but it's probably easiest to down, at this point to, why, why would you, you could just download them from here and, and use them that way. But, but yes, the idea is that I uh, will document that <laughs> soon. The important thing is though they're available and, and so if you download them here, you have to unzip them and then, and then you have to, which is not so easy. Actually, maybe let's do that. Let's just download some files and let's see if we can work out how that works. So let's, I'll take a low resolution, 10 minutes, so that goes relatively quickly. Uh, let's do 2070. Our, let's do uh, the bioclimatics again for this model. It doesn't really matter. Let's see if it will download. Okay, it's downloading. Yes, question? Yeah. Somebody here? What kind of data? Greenness. Data, yeah. greenness um, like ocean greenness or just or, or land greenness? Yeah, well, in principle, yes. Um, there's, there's different sources, uh, but this is typically for kind of a MODIS or satellite product. Um, so let's look at that as well. Let's just, let's just look at that. Let's, let's find one. Um, so here's this uh, zip file that I downloaded, all these files in there. So let's unzip these. Um, I'll put it in temp. Uh, new folder, come on, try again, new, cmip5, I'll put them in there, okay, so here are my downloaded files, now how do I use those, well, um, let's just one way to start would be this way. Let's see what's okay. We, you know, you know this goes wrong. Why? Why does it go wrong? If you if you all seen this error slash she is an unrecognized escape in character string starting Lola. What the hell does that mean? Yeah, you you probably know. <laughs> go ahead, tell me. You have a wrong slash. What is the wrong slash? I mean, backslash. oh, so you, the backslash is wrong. But why? Why? Why is it? And why is this one wrong and that one is not wrong? Has a special meaning, right? So, so the this slash is a, is the escape character. This combined with another character has a special meaning. So it's used to indicate that it's you know, this is an N. But this is escape n, and it has a special meaning. What does escape n mean? Line. New line. Return. Hard to return. Um, escape t. Very common. Oh. Tab. Tabulate. And so that's sort of the ASCII code to, to have some of these, these word processing um, um, symbols, if you like, or, or tricks in, in, an, in a text file. Now, um, and so this is wrong, but this is fine. But now this one, unrecognized, slash she doesn't mean anything. So that's what it's saying. This I understand because uh, what we had, we had um, C colon tab EMP unknown character. And so what do we do? Two things you can do. Escape the escape. You say, well, escape slash means actually want a slash. Now it's fine, right? So escape, escape. Now it means that because the escape is escaped, it no longer means escape, it just means slash, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, on Linux, you always use forward slashes and it also works. Okay, so these are the files we downloaded. This was the model abbreviation, RCP, BioClim, 2050, and then one, da 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 da. So why are they in this order? Well, they are in this order because this is the alphabetical order. 
Now, the alphabetical order doesn't really help us very much, right? Because this, this, this is alphabetic. One, one, zero, one, 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 two, and eventually get to three. Alphabetic is not one, two, three if you have also a 10 in there. Um, and that's, you know, we, I would typically want to have these in order. So that's, a, that's difficult because you, you would say, well, okay, I have these files here. I could do sort F, but they are already sorted. So how can we sort these so that we can actually get them in the order we want them? I would like to have them one, two, three, four, five, and then ending with 19. And you wonder how much you, or, how much you sort this? Yeah, yeah, you need to extract the number from the string. So how do we do that? String cut or something. String cut or something. Yeah, yes, yeah. Well, that's, that's essentially that's what it is. I mean, it's, it's good. I mean, it's, it's very nice you were able to. The, the first step, but, but if you're not used to this type of, of work, if you're used to GUIs and Excel, you have to learn how to think systematically, and this is, that's exactly how you think about. It. Okay, well, somehow you have to get that number because that, and somehow you have to cut it out. Now, string cut is not an, not, not an actual f function, but it doesn't matter. You have, you have it's something like that. Um, let's see. What can we do? Well, one way to think about it is, is, is there's some, it's not so easy. You cannot say, well, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. You could say, well, cut 9 and 10. Well, sometimes it's 9, sometimes it's 10. But at least you can cut off the first eight characters and get 9 and 10, and then maybe, then maybe get rid of the dots. And maybe one way. So we could say... Um, substring f 9 to 10. It's probably wrong, but let's see what that does. Ah, exactly right. And now this is, will work, actually, because I'll just say, well, what about s integer? Ah, that was easy. Okay, so now this, this is nice to have. So we have these integers, and um, Let's call, it, call that i, and we really want what we want to get is, of course, this. Well, you want the file names to sort like this. So how do you do that? We're still not quite there. We sort of have this now, but now we need to sort this by. It's not. That's not so easy, or is it? Wow, how would you do that? It's a really interesting magical formula. It's, it, this is this is odd how this works. Maybe there's different ways, but the way I would do it is odd. So you can say, well, O. Give it a name. And okay. Transform that in, in an object, and then use it to order. Yeah, well, so I, I've given it a name, so it's I. So how do I use this to order those? You put F, uh, how you say brackets, I? F, I. <coughs> nope, 1, 18, 19. So if you do that, you get the first, and then the 10th, and the 11th. <laughs> so we had, you know, so we had F this way. So you get the first, and then the 10th, but the 10th is this one. But what we need is this, if we need this one. We need the 12th. That's close, but what's that? In sort I, yeah, no, if I, because if, if you do in sort I, well, they all, they all be in there. I mean, it's interesting. I in sort I, is that what you say? That's, that's an odd thing to say because all I's are, of course, in sort I. So that won't change anything. So if you say I in, well, in I, essentially, it's all true if you sort it or not. So I in I, so you could say I, is I in, in one, two, three? Well, some are and some are not. I'll show it. So what you use is the order function. Order i. And you get this. And that's, it, it works very odd. But now if you do f order i, padam. Okay, so and it's, it's hard to follow how that works. And so... But, but, you, but the trick is here. So order i is, is sort of how it ought to be sorted. So if you say, so order i is 1 12th. And if you count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 is a 2. 
So basically it says, if you want to order i, these are the indices that you need to use. So you first want i1, then i12, then i13, etc. So if you do i order i, you get the same as sort i. So order i tells us how you need to, what you need to change in the order of i to sort i. And given that i has these numbers that came from f, it needs to be sorted the same way. So now we know how to sort f, because we figured out how to sort i by getting this order i. And so it's a really odd, nice little trick, and it, but it can be very confusing because you see these order i numbers and you, I always mix up what they actually mean. But f order i sorts them. Okay, that's great. So now we, I signed it back to f. Now I have these file names. Um, how did I get them in the first place? Let's remember that, it was important. So we got them here. And then I sorted them this way. Now. That's interesting because so, sort i equation two uh, would, would order i, but wouldn't order f. No. No, why would it? Because you just, you're touch, uh, touching i, not f, right? It, it doesn't do anything to f. But wouldn't, by, by putting i, we would, wouldn't we be using the, the indexes of f to order f? I mean, if would how, how, what, what, what would you type? I would type i is sort f. Is sort f. i is sort f. Well, then you just get the, yeah, but then you just get f back. Okay. Uh -huh. for having a so that's i. So having a number, that's i. And then I would sort i decreasing false. So I would get well, that, that's, that's ref sort i. Or ref sort i. But then it's just the opposite. No, no, uh, actually I would put sort decreasing false. Is that the same thing? It's not. I have, I have an, ascending, an ascending order. Oh, okay, so that's just sort i then. No, because now you just have one. Now, if you do use i, you just get exactly the same order what you already have. Because you say f1, f2, f3, f4, and that's what you already have. You don't change anything, <laughs> right? If you put, if you do f i at this point, that's exactly what f is, because you're getting f1, f2, f3 in the same order as you already had them. So it doesn't change the thing. That's but why. That's why order i is interesting, because that that is. Now these indices are different. Oh, you're going to get F1, F12, F13, and then so you get F1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up, and then you get 11, 12, etc. So that's why this one works. All right, so this one works. Let's, let's leave it at that. Um, so I'll just, for simplicity, I'll go to, I'll set my working directory. Well, let's not do that. Let's, so we have these files in order. And now, how do we make a raster object that we can work with? What would be the function before that? So now we have the file names, but we don't have an object yet that we, you know, these are these future climate data, and let's say we want to extract some values or whatever we want to do. Stack. What stack? These are, these are multiple files. You want a single object, so we say stack, stack f. So s equals stack f. Ah, doesn't work. Does not exist in the file system. And is not recognized as a support data set name. Well, <laughs> I think that should be or, but. Um, well, and is fine too, I suppose. It doesn't exist, and we don't recognize it either. Uh, why is that? File exists. We are not in the. It's in the right. We're not in that folder, right? So, so that. Um, these files, I got them by saying list files. In this folder, I didn't say full names is true, where you would get the file names with the folder name um, uh, appended to it. And so it thinks it's in my, in my current working directory, which is cur, uh, get working directory. It thinks it's here. 
Well, there's different ways you can work with that. You could change your working directory. I typically don't like to do that. And so what I would do now is, is just say paste zero, um, the same, the folder where it came from, which is this one. Paste means, um, oh, it made paste. Um, glue together, in this case. Uh, not the same paste as in copy and paste. Uh, so let's call it FF. And so now FF are, are the full file names with the path uh, where they are. And so stack FF. Uh, now something is working, and S is our uh, data set. So this is how you would, would do it, by uh, downloading them manually. Um, and supposedly, let's see, plot as one. Oh. This would, should plot the first um, layer. There we go. Okay, you want a vegetation data, right? Or, or greenness. So let's see. Um, greenness data. The greenness of monitoring methods. Hmm. Okay, let's, let's do something else. Let's do NDVI. So that's a technical term, normalized di uh, differential vegetation index. Um, data, let's see, download. Let's, let's look at this one. Open this one. Not sure. Anyone knows a very a nice simple source, but well, let's just let's just see how far we get. Um, oh. University of Maryland is doesn't is not home today. Oh, go back. Come on. What's going on? Um, Clark's lap of one. Okay, here, 16 day L3 global 215 meters. Mod 13 Q1. Anyone understands this stuff? Any, any MODIS users? There are some, because people complain to me that <laughs> MODIS was too slow with the roster package. Uh, now speak up. <laughs> Not paying attention. Anyone else? Well, what this all means, vegetation indices 16-day L3 global 250 meters, MOD 13 Q1. I mean, it's kind of a cadabra. Uh, cadaver. Hmm? Level three. Level three. Yeah. It was level three. Anyone else? Level three. Right. Yeah. Well, the way Modis is processing processing level. That's what it is. Yeah. So, so they you get the so Modis is this, is the sensor on two satellites, Terra and Aqua. Uh, they've been there in orbit for 12 years now or so, so every day we, they cover the whole world um, with, with different sensors, really, 250-meter uh, resolution, 500-meter resolution, one-kilometer resolution, depending on the bandwidth. Um, so 250-meter tells us the spatial resolution. And then there's different levels of processing. You have the raw data, and then they process it, you know, they geocorrect it and do some things with it, and then... And then so and so forth. So L3 is sort of the third level of processing because it's already a, a derived product. I think that's one of the reasons it's an L3. It's no longer the raw reflectance data that was actually measured by the sensor. It's now some computed uh, quantity um, vegetation index. 16 day meaning it's not daily. It's a 16 day something maximum average, probably the maximum. Uh, in many places, you know, you, Modis comes over every day, but you're lucky if you find one day, like in Bergen, you're lucky if you find a good day without clouds. And so typically you take for every two weeks, uh, 16 days, half a month uh, period, you take the max for the best conditions. That, that's your, 
your reading. That's how you would do it, NDVI. And it's, I'm sure that's all explained here. So certain things at least, yeah. Um, all right, so that's that's nice. So they had this, so this this data exists. Now where do we get it? Uh, doesn't tell us. Data access. NASA is just terrible for this stuff. It's just so complicated. Um, each time you have to relearn it. Um, but let's see if there's a simple one where you can just download it without have to set up an account and everything. Um, of course, data access helps us, data pool, online archive. That's what we could try. Um, meanwhile, there's also this one, which again points to Maryland, which was offline, it seems. Let's see if it... Land cover data. Da, da, da. Okay, let's see how the data pool is working. Okay, download via ACTP. Okay, well, let's do um, Aster, another satellite, higher resolution, Modis Aqua, Modis Terra, so the satellites are called Aqua and Terra. They have the same instrument, Modis instrument on it. Well, it's a different instrument, but it's the same specifications. Combined, we don't really care which one it is. Okay, there we go. Oh, now what? What are these directories? Well, these are these different products. So which one do we want to have? 13Q1. Ah, it's not there. They have 12C1, 12Q1, 20. Uh, we could try 12C1, but I don't know what it is. Let's see, 12C1. But let's just have a look at it. Okay, now we have these, these numbers. Any idea what those mean? You could probably guess it, right? 2012 to the 11. So those are years. So this is just one yearly thing. But it's not what we wanted, so we don't, let's not do that. Um, I'll leave it at that, actually. Um, I, I, I don't know of a simple source. The, 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 the short of it is, yes, it's there. Um, it takes a while to find it. Um, in this, this example where, where, uh, where I was going, um, now we get HDF format, which is actually a problem. Um, RGDAL, uh, the standard RGDAL for Windows doesn't read that, so you have to use some other tools to transform that to another um, uh, file format. So Modis is tricky, but it's, it's certainly there, and um, I'll, um, I'll, I'll try to spend some time to find something, and, but it's, it's probably will take too long for it, just to do this as a group. Um, yeah, so data, uh, it's hard to give a general statement. It's, it's, it, there's a lot of data out there. There's an incredible amount of data out there. It's, it's, it's surprising how poorly organized it is. You think, well, if it, you know, there, there could be so much efficiency would be gained if, if that were easier available. Um, but it isn't. Out here? No, nah, that's that's just that's just um, that's just um, <laughs> maybe let's turn. Let, I first have to turn down the camera before I respond to that. <laughs> no, that's just a, that's just the boilerplate uh, statement they always put. It's like like these emails that they send people send to mailing lists say that this is only for intended recipients, and if you just, if you're not the intended recipient, you should delete this, and if you don't do that, we will prosecute to the full extent of the law, and da 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 da. This is just to say, well, who knows. But we can always try to get try to get you. But um, yeah, uh, this is the United States. You know, they, it's, it's, they like they like legal uh, legal thing. So disciplinary action in criminal prosecution. At least the nice thing he'd actually specify that you're consenting to complete monitoring with no expectation of privacy. They typically don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> in everything else we do, so. No, that's just, a, just a click ahead, isn't it? <laughs> Here at least they say so. Any questions about data? It's a bit, it's a bit, it's a bit of a fuzzy subject, so it's hard to uh, give any definite answers. Another example, uh, any, any, what data would you like to have? 
What if I have? No, that's so easy. That's the thing, because I can, I can show you things that I know are easy to do. But that, that, and that's why, and then you go home, you say, well, yeah, that was easy, but now I want, what do you want? Any croplands. Croplands. Crop yeah, there's, so there's, um, there, there's, there's some, uh, let's, let's, um, there's a couple so sources, but that, that's cropland um, data, spatial data. So here's one, um, or crops. Assessing the spatial diffusion of crops. Free spatial data, DYGIS, interesting. Um, here's one. Let's look at this one. There's another big one that somehow doesn't show up, which is interesting. Um, Raman Kuti has made a lot of these data sets. But somehow, they need to know that, it seems. Oh. And map spam doesn't work today. Let's see. I know spam crop maps is also one. Yeah, that's the, this one. Somehow, we are in the data. The data sets are down. Okay, there's never a Kudi data. This is data. Okay, uh, global cropland and pasture data. New from 2007. Harvest error and yields for 175 crops. Which one do you prefer? Just a cropland or a specific crops? Let's say cropland. There's there. Net CDF. Oof. Anyone know what that is? Net CDF? Okay, you got global crop and pasture, 1700, 2007, half degree, net CDF dot zip. Yeah, well, um, yes, and actually, um, it, it, in the roster packages, that's uh, pretty much automated, so you, don't, you, you can just treat it as any uh, roster data set. So that's nice to get up this. So, net CDF is. Um, a format that's used particularly in climatology. It's of a generic file format you can use to store any kind of array of any dimension. So matrix or three-dimensional, four-dimensional array. So use, the climatologists like it because you can, for example, these climate models, you'll have space, spatial data, and then you have the atmosphere, so you have different, different heights, and then you have time. So you have a lot of dimensions, and you have different variables, and NetCDF is a very nice uh, file format to store that. Um, and, so, and some other groups also use it. Um, but it, it, it took a long time for the sort of the GIS community to, to um, deal with that. ArcGIS now also, uh, I think, can, um, can read it. So R has, some, has the NCDF, the NCDF package, and then the roster package uses that to, use to, to treat this as any other spatial data set. So let's see if that's going to work. Um, Open this. Maybe you can even animate this and look at the changes in cropland over time. That'd be nice. Um, where do I put this? Let's put it again in C temp. Or just here. I'm allow will allow me to continue. Okay, so. I can actually open it. So there's the Intel, it has a little viewer that allows you to um, look at it directly. But let's just say, um, so this is a brick because it's a single file, multiple layers, not stack. It would be inefficient, .nc, I think it was. Meanwhile, we can look at it here. So you can, you can inspect sort of what's in there with some of these tools, global historical land cover data, sources, no history, Gregorian calendar. So it, it tells us how time is capped and where, you know, where we start and if you have leap years or things like that. Um, use certain conventions. Here's the time, 1700, 1701, so that's years. All the latitudes or the longitudes. Anyway, that's all in that file, but we don't need to know that because we just have this break now. 
um, and we can do a plot B1. It's kind of hard to see these colors. So basically it says in 1700 that really, you know, Western Europe was, and India and parts of China and Yangtze area, and Nigeria, a lot of cropland. You know, this, these are big guesses, right? But that's, that's what, what they, they figured, and very little in um, South America. So let's actually, we could, we could uh, compare that with, um, um, so we have, what, 308 layers. So let's, let's look at the last one. Let's make a new one, a new uh, window, so we can put it next to each other. Brazil's clearly something happened there, and the United States is uh, pretty spectacular as well. Nigeria is pretty stable, according to, to I mean, there's more, but not that much more, so that, that seems a bit odd to me. I don't think population density was nearly as much, not, yeah, it wasn't nearly as much as it is now, so I'm not so sure how good that is. Um, let's see if we can animate this. There is a function, but I forget how it works. Let's see. Animate X. All right. And what does it create? Maybe it's just draws the movie like that. Let's see. I, mean, I truly don't quite remember, but it, it shouldn't matter. And it may be. Error. Oh. Hmm. Well, I guess that's not going to work. Where would it be, though? Well, not working. Um, strange, but maybe I can um, try. I'll aggregate it, make it a bit smaller. It takes a little while to aggregate it because there's all these. Oh, gee, same problem. Maybe I've been doing too many things. I'm just going to close and open up again. Library roster. And you made B. Who knows? I doubt it, but you never know. Well, clearly that's not working. Okay. Well, uh, I'm sure it's possible um, this way. Simple, regular, B, 10,000. I'll make a very small version of it and see if you can animate it then. Um, something not working. Oh, well. We'll exhibit it up. We got the data. At least we got the data. There seems to be something other, other thing that's odd with it. I'm not sure. What? Also, a way would maybe to... to animate, make a GIF of the... Well, that's what this would do. That's what, I mean, well, there's, there's two things this can do. This, this, would, this would just animate it live, but there's also a way to write it to a GIF. So you, you can save it and put it in your PowerPoint. Um, you know, so I use that function to, to create, um, uh, let's see, I, I have some here. Um, G drive, no, in a docs, PowerPoint. Uh, bum, bum, bum. Here. So again, with this, with all this space-time data, it, it gets very hard to visualize that. You know, how do, how do you show that? Um, that was yesterday's. I think my computer is getting tired. Here we start. Oh, I already showed one animation yesterday, actually. Um, but because you asked for a cropland, well, here's, here's a couple. Something not going right.
Yeah, well, I don't really, I, I, I don't, I don't really expect you to be documenting it. I mean, um, I mean, you have the documentation. A lot of the things I talk about are in there. I just, I mean, I, I really think you, you, what, you would tr what I would try to do over you is to listen and to follow the concepts and the thinking and the logic, not not any particular command, because because they are really in these handouts anyway. It just it provides some more context. Um, But I will try to save them anyway in the future. The, the ones I had, I just thrown away. But, but I, th I think it's really not, not too worthwhile to, to write them down because you get all these little code snippet, snippets. I mean, like, like the, the sorting I was doing. Yeah, there's all, all kinds of little tricks. But, it, but you know, what I, when I said, like, the important thing is that you understand sort of certain steps you have to take. And that's, that's really where I, I feel you have to get from, from what I talk about. So here's one animation. Uh, Here's another one, the really uh, model output. Um, but I had some here that I thought I would show, but uh, I forget where they are now. Here's another one. This is, this is what's this more cropland example. This is the you know, corn in the United States uh, from 1870 to 2012 or so. So, so yeah, you, you, can, you, you can look at cropland over time and animate it and analyze it. But, um, yeah, so data is, is very multidimensional, so it's, it's hard to make, make, make many general statements about it. But. All right, I think I'll, any, well, any questions about data, data issues? <coughs> so we talked a bit about these boundaries and like, you know, economics, economists will often work with boundaries and census type data and try to link those. And you know, that's, that's troublesome with these names that don't match. It just takes time and to do it. Uh, another problem with these boundaries that I was showing for France is that they change over time, so very often you get data for a set of, say, provinces, and then you have maps of the provinces, but it doesn't match because there was a change. Um, you go into QGIS and try to fix that, maybe by drawing new boundaries in, looking at Wikipedia, stuff like that. For raster, for raster grid, but, or raster stack, but how would you put this in a raster? I mean, this, this seems to have more than... Oh, these, are, this is, these are actually... Um, um, that's true. The, the, the animate function I showed was for breaks. This is actually a, a spatial points, and probably done with the animate package, but the, or just with a loop, some kind of a loop where you just plot one after the other. Yeah, yeah, it's a good point. This is this is different. The other ones, yes, but the, this was a different example. I'm gonna restart here. Okay, uh, I'll come around again. Um, see how far we're we getting before lunch. So you can think about the uh, afternoon. So what I, so in the afternoon I want to talk about, oh, well, downscaling I didn't talk about. That was, that was other question. So climate data. Climate data is, is um, something that Tom Hengel is also working on. He's working on a project to get um, high resolution, sp high spatial temporal resolution weather data. So, so historically there's always been the, sort of a trade-off. Either you had high temporal resolution like weather stations. You have daily data or even hourly data, but only for stations. And then you have raster data. Um, typically, then initially, there were very large areas, maybe half degree, degree. And then there's world plane, which is high, high spatial resolution with very low temporal resolution, because you only have climate averages. So it's this trade-off of, of what you had available uh, between time and space. And increasingly, right, so you either had time or you had space, if this is time. Can you even see this? Uh, but increasingly, we, we're going there. Um, but there, but, but it's, it's also a difficult area to, to navigate, where, where you have all kinds of different products. Um, but the CMIP5 data we're showing, so there, so there is uh, very high spatial resolution, downscaled future climate data on the WorldClim website you can, you can use in this context. Um, it's probably as good as you need in most cases. It's just some average for 2050, 2070. It's for more complex models where you really want to simulate some you know, daily weather data uh, for some ecological response process, uh, process model or so, where, where things are trickier and where, where it's, even, but even there it may be unclear whether you really want daily data or just want to simulate daily data out of monthly data or approximate things. And there's, there's all kinds of opportunities or, or different routes people are taking, a lot of literature about uh, all kinds of different examples. But, um, um, so I would say you know a lot of downscaling that exists. Typically, you don't need it. Uh, 
need to do it yourself anymore, I, I, would, I would hope. Um, send me an email if you have any particular questions, like, oh, I need this for this country, and if you say it exists, then why is it? <laughs> and I might be wrong, you know, it, it's... Um, I've done a lot of downscaling of climate data, but also, for example, of, of uh, what I showed yesterday a little bit of, of uh, income data, where you may have a, this different type of downscaling. You may only know for departments, but you may want to estimate for communes or so. There, there are tricks for that. But otherwise, I'll, I'll leave it at that, and this afternoon we'll, I can talk a bit more about particularly the machine learning things uh, and, and cross-validation also in that context. So that also comes up in, in some of the chapters of this PDF, but I've been talking so much that maybe you haven't gotten there yet, so I'll, I'll let you work. <laughs>